Welcome to module one of this course. Module one is about the nature of statistics and probability. What will you learn in module one? There are two topics that are discussed in this module. The first is you will learn about the basic statistical concept. In the second section of this module, you will learn about the different types of sampling techniques. Now we are going to start with the definition of statistics. According to Blumann, statistics is the science of conducting studies to collect, organize, summarize, analyze, and draw conclusions from data. Statistics is used in almost fields of human endeavor. Statistics is widely used in the field of sports, in the field of public health, such as the number of COVID-19 positive cases in a certain area, and even in the field of education, such as how many percent of the students passed the course or how many percent of the students failed the said course. Record the data, such as the number of business permits issued by a city, the number of customers eating at a restaurant, the size of enrollment at new SLS, and so on, are examples of statistical data. And even numerical characteristics calculated for a set of data, such as mean, median, and mode, are also under the field of statistics. And the most important is, statistics is known as the backbone of research. Statistics is derived from the Latin word status, meaning political states. There are many statisticians who introduce different the statistical tests, but among them, it is Ronald Fisher who is named as the father of statistics. Sir Ronald Alimor Fisher has been described as a genius who almost single-handedly created the foundation for modern statistical science. He was a British statistician, evolutionary biologist, and geneticist. Among his contributions to statistics is an analysis of variance, also known as ANOVA. He also began the field of non-parametric statistics, although he did not feel it was necessary. Why study statistics? According to Ronald Fisher, to consult the statistician after an experiment is finished is often merely to ask him to conduct a post-mortem examination. He can perhaps say what the experiment died of. With this, it tells us that one must consult the statistician in the beginning of the research process, not in the final part of the research process. Another thing is, statistics plays a major part in our decision-making process. According again to Ronald Fisher, we have the duty of formulating, of summarizing, and then communicating our conclusions in intelligible form in recognition of the right of other free minds to utilize them in making their own decisions. Statistics is divided into two main areas. The first area is descriptive statistics, and the second area of statistics is known as inferential statistics. Descriptive statistics involves collection, organization, summation, and presentation of data. One of the best examples of descriptive statistics is the National Census, in which the National Census involves the average or the total population of a given area, the average household size, the number of female, the number of uh, male in a given area, and so on. It also includes the average number of cakes sold in a day or the average height of a Filipino female. While in the second area, which is known as inferential statistics, it involves 
generalizing from samples to populations, performing hypothesis testing, determining relationship among variables, and making predictions. Here are examples of descriptive statistics and inferential statistics. The average number of students in a class at USLS is 45. So this is again an example of descriptive statistics. Last year's national budget is 200 billion pesos. 30% of the total population of Barangay Banago is male. There is an increase of 20% in the number of dengue cases from last year. While under inferential statistics, which involves uh, generalization or making conclusion from a sample to population, uh, comparing differences between two independent populations, and uh, determining relationship between two variables, these are all under inferential statistics. So one example is, drinking decaffeinated coffee can raise cholesterol levels by 7%. So it says here that there is a relationship between the amount of caffeine in coffee and cholesterol levels. Well, the second example is about prediction. It is predicted that the cost of crude oil will increase next week. There is a significant difference in the level of academic performance of male and female students. And the last example, there is a moderate relationship between the student's level of engagement in school activities and academic performance. Since research or statistics is the backbone of research, let us review the research process. The first part of the research process is to formulate the problem, where the problem must be specific, measurable, attainable, realistic, and time-bounded. And in research, you must also determine the analytic goals in it. There are different types of analytic goals. The first is central tendency, where you are interested to find the average of a particular variable or particular feature of uh, a given or a group of data, such as the average age of the respondents or the average score of the uh, students in a given quiz, or the median age of the respondents, or the uh, brand that is most preferred or the brand of cell phone that is most preferred by the students. Another type of analytic goal is the variance in the group or the measures of the spread of the uh, values or the data in a given group. The third is the uh, difference within the group or between groups. The fourth analytic goal is uh, relationships within the group and the fifth is uh, prediction. There are two types of analysis, descriptive analysis and uh, inferential analysis. Descriptive analysis is limited to the description of the particular group being studied. Conclusion cannot be applied to cases outside the study group. While inferential it is the application of the findings or conclusions from a small, small group to a large group from which the smaller group was drawn. The next step in research is the identification of the variables that are involved. A variable is a numerical characteristic or attribute associated with the population being studied. There are two main types of variables, categorical or qualitative variables, which includes gender, which is classified as uh, male or female, religion, eye color, civil status, and poor. So these are variables that can assume qualitative values only. 
The second type of uh, variables is known as numerical or quantitative variables. These are variables which can assume numerical values only, such as the age in years, height in centimeters, grade in math, or the number of children in a family. Quantitative variables is classified into discrete variables and continuous variables. A quantitative variable is discrete if it is measured by counting, such as the number of students who are enrolled in a class, the number of siblings in a family, or the number of patients admitted in a hospital. While continuous variables are variables whose values are measured using an instrument, such as the height of a person, the weight of a person, the IQ of a given or rather of a person. So these are examples of continuous variables. Data are the values or measurements or observation that the variables can assume. While a collection of data forms a data set, and each value in the data set is called a data value or a datum. Now, what is the difference between a population and a sample? A population consists of all subjects that are being studied, while a sample is a subgroup of a population or a subset of a given population. The members of the samples are taken from a given population. For example, what is the average number of days spent by a tourist in Bacolod City? Now, what is the population here? The population in this given problem is all tourists arriving in Bacolod City. And the variable in this problem is the number of days spent by a tourist in Bacolod City.